Hello and welcome to Newsmakers for this Tuesday, October 1st, 2024. And with the turn of the calendar, we move one step closer to our provincially elected officials returning from their extended summer break and to discuss what their priorities may be for the ruling PC government, as well as the opposition NDP and the Ontario Grits. I'm pleased to welcome back to the show our Queen's Park producer here at CHCH, Randy Rath. And uh, Randy, that's kind of the big question. Will we get any kind of hint that there'll be an election in this spring. What are you expecting to see uh, in those two and a half weeks uh, that, that the, uh, the, we, we see MPPs return to Queen's Park? Do you mean before they return to Queen's Park? Yeah. I, I don't expect this to get any indication if there's going to be a, a, an election next year. Um, we've already had indications that there are. Uh, I, I was convinced not too long ago that there wasn't going to be an election, and that was based solely upon Doug Ford's understanding that Jugbeat Singh didn't get his pension until October of 2025, or November of 2025, but Doug was wrong on that. Judge gets his pension in January of 2025, so that changes the whole scenario as far as I'm concerned as to when there could be a federal election, and the Tories in Ontario want to get that, that election out before the feds do. So it could happen any time. And to add to that, the um, progressive conservatives in Ontario uh, provincially are having training sessions next week uh, in Toronto and then one in Ottawa and a couple more weeks where they train uh, for election preparedness. They show how to run an election campaign in the riding, how, how um, um, campaign offices should work, that sort of thing. So they're ramping up. They're getting prepared for this thing. I wouldn't be surprised to see it next spring. I, I can't see it happening before, you know, the weather gets nice. Mm -hmm. uh, we had Sabrina and Angie on here a couple of weeks ago. She wrote about that this week as well. You mentioned it. It is a free campaign management training session. Uh, you mentioned the Toronto training day as well. Um, what do the uh, Ontario PCs have to gain in a provincial election? They have a majority. They've passed whatever they've wanted to pass. Uh, what, what, do they, what, what would they have to positively uh, benefit from by calling an election in the spring? They maintain power. Um, you know, if, if, if they don't, if, they, if the federal Tories get in, Poliev is going to start to cut programs. He's going to start to, to cut back on the amount of money they spent, and that will reflect negatively on all Tories. So Doug Ford doesn't want Poliev's cuts to affect his electability. Yeah, and I mean, because that's what people don't like about politics is that you're basically just running to stay in power that that seems ford seems very clear that he you know he's going to announce these pie in the sky ideas these tunnels you know he's going to run on the fact that he got booze into convenience stores and gas stations but to 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 earn another mandate i mean what what can he say he's done and and how does he run on that he can't run on the fact that well i had to beat the federal pcs to it so what does he run on well, what he runs on, he says, I have already completed what I promised I would do in the last election campaign, so let's have another term when I can make even more progress in fixing things in the province. And they look at it as they have fixed things in the province. And that's not necessarily, you know, some big fabrication. They've spent a ton of money on infrastructure and on building hospitals, building schools, building long-term care homes. The opposition doesn't want you to think about that, but it's true. They've spent billions of dollars, unprecedented amounts on, on, on hospitals and on, on long-term care homes. And you know, you could throw infinite amounts of money at hospitals and long-term care homes and not meet the needs of the population. And also, one of the reasons that we're, we're, we're falling behind with um, you know hallway healthcare and that sort of thing is our, our population has grown immensely since the last election. Like you, you know you, you've gotten like essentially a million more people in the province since Doug Ford took power, and that, it, it's very hard to um, you know keep up with the healthcare needs of a million extra people.
Uh, there's one thing I've, I've been impressed by, by this uh, PC government, and it's their ability to stay on message. And sometimes it's a very, I, I don't want to say fabricated message, but when you see the same MPPs copy and paste the exact same tweets at the exact same time, you know, it, it, it's hard to, to blame them for being on message, but how well have the PCs been at that? And what is the secret to that? Because it seems like the NDPs, the Liberals, the Green... Green, I, I'll give some pass to. Mike Schrander, I think, is pretty good at rapid response. The PCs are so good at their rapid response and, and changing the narrative quickly. Yeah, they move the the, 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 the uh, MVP spout the party line. They they all um, tweet it or X it or whatever we call it now. Uh, once they've made a made an announcement, and that's where you know Bonnie Crombie is falling behind because she's largely been missing in action for since she took the leadership. Uh, you know, she had a press conference the other day um, to talk about. Sp excessive spending on agency nurses. And it was the same day that Doug Ford announced his giant tunnel. Um, <laughs> yeah, project, idea. Uh, project, yeah. <laughs> and um, she, she, she didn't respond to questions of the day that were coming up. Like she said, you know, this tunnel is a thing to distract from people not having doctors and, and that sort of thing. But when she was asked about, what do you think about Doug Ford wanting to eliminate bike lanes? She said, I'm not here to talk about that. Hmm. We're here to talk about agency nurses. And she wouldn't, she wouldn't supply an answer. And there's another issue that just escapes me right now that she wouldn't answer. And I thought, you know, Bonnie, you're, 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 not, you're not out there that much. So when we do get you, we're going to ask you everything that we could possibly think of. Hmm. Because, you know, when, if there's a story of the day and we go to the liberals wanting response, Bonnie isn't, they'll give us a, a quote from Bonnie, but they generally won't put her up. And so we go after John Frazier, who's a very effective communicator, and, and, and he's the guy that's going to be leading the, the Liberals in the House this time, this, this, this mm. next sitting. And, um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate for Bonnie that she doesn't have a seat right now. Well, and we, you know, and I was going to switch there because we saw the Milton by elections. You declined not to run in that seat. It could, you know, looked like a smart move with the PCs winning it. We saw the Bay of Quinty election as well. You would think that because of those results, and the Liberals will say, hey, we gained a greater vote share than we did the time before. Our our share of the grow, gr of the vote is growing. That's something to look forward to. Look at the PCs. They're dropping. They're dropping. It was a closer election than it should have been. Um, are you not surprised that, that considering those results, we don't see more Bonnie Grumby? And to an extension, we don't see Merritt Stiles? Or is, are, is everybody just in, in, enjoying this extended summer break they've had? Um, you know, Merit Styles is out there all the time. She will, uh, you know, if you ask for for reaction from from the NDP, Merit will will give it, or she'll let her, you know, the person that's uh, her critic do it. Yeah. Um, I, I I think that uh, Bonnie has, has has given up an opportunity here to to get herself known by the public, and and not being available has made it so that the narrative that that the Tories have. have, have put on her, calling her, you know, the uh, queen of the carbon tax, that has stuck because she hasn't been able to define herself. She has allowed the Tories to define her, which is, a, you know, in my mind, a critical error on the part of, of, of a wannabe premier. Hmm. Um, the other thing, I guess, about Bonnie Crombie, she's going to have to face is those people who can't separate liberal or federal liberals from provincial liberals um has donnie has bonnie done a, a good enough job distancing herself from an unpopular justin trudeau or how how much do you see doug ford uh using the unpopularity of trudeau to go after miss crombie well bonnie has uh has been distancing herself from 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 mr trudeau <laughs> and you know doug ford is he will attack Trudeau's policies, but he likes to say, you know, I get along with anybody. I can work with anybody. So he isn't going to personally attack uh, Justin Trudeau, as his federal counterparts will. Hmm. You know, Mr. Ford um, is, is blaming Bonnie herself and not trying to link her with the uh, mm. federal Tories, other than the, the queen of the carbon tax. Thing. Mm -hmm. um, 
Which Let's is talk. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, they got a lot of money to spend, right? The PCs do. We see these $1,000 a plate fundraisers happening every week. Um, how do you see them sort of spending that money? Like you said, you don't think they're going to be dropping any, you know, any two distinct hints that there's going to be an election. We'll see funding announcements like this tunnel thing. What would you expect to see um, in this sitting coming up? You know, not pr it's going to be a short one. I think we were talking about the way the calendar shakes out. Um, who's going to be using their time? What are they going to be arguing for? What What's the next few months going to look like pre-election? Well, let's just go over how what, what the sitting is going to look like. They're going to go in for three weeks, starting on the 21st of October. After three weeks, they take a week off. Then they're back for uh, four weeks, <laughs> and then they're off until the end, end of next February. So it's going to be a very short, very eventful sitting. They're, they're going to try and make the theme of the sitting that they're um, building. They want to, they, we're getting things done, we're building. So you're going to see a lot of infrastructure announcements. You're going to see them you know, getting shovels in the ground, starting to build everything that you can think of. Um, and there's going to be four main bills put into this. There, there's going to be an, a, a, an omnibus bill, which is going to talk about reducing gridlock. So they're not going to say they're going to build the tunnel, but they're going to talk about uh, bike lanes. They're going to do other measures to try to reduce gridlock. And it's going to be an omnibus bill, which means it's going to control or it's going to encompass all sorts of stuff that doesn't necessarily have to do with relieving gridlock. Hmm. And I think that because there's such um, emphasis on reducing gridlock and traffic, that they must have polling that shows that that's very, very popular with the <laughs> The second yeah. thing they're going to do is they're going to do safer communities. They've been preconditioning us for this with shutting down injection sites. They're going to, um, yeah. you know, open up heart hubs. They're going to give detail on how that's going to happen. And there's going to be other measures to make people feel safer on the streets. I think they're going to enhance the cops' abilities to do their jobs. <clears throat> and there's going to be a um, red tape reduction bill, which happens every six months. They put in a new red tape reduction bill to make it easier and faster to do things in the province, to build things, to open businesses, that sort of thing. And around Remembrance Day, there's going to be a, um, a veterans bill that they bring out that will make it um, enhancing community. They're going to enhance community supports for veterans. And also, and the thing that's been emphasized to me from insiders is they're going to do they're going to make a big deal of increasing available energy in the province. So they're going to, you know, we're going to have huge demands for, for electricity going forward. And they're going to do something. I don't know what. They're going to have more energy sources. So I would speculate that those small modular nuclear reactors that we hear about and they're so proud of, I would wager that they will put those around the province. I don't know how many, so that there is electricity produced closer to where the, it's needed so you don't have the problems with enormous lengths of transmission line. Yeah, we've heard nuclear for a while. Uh, Bruce Power, uh, Darlington, OPG up there, uh, a lot of different places that, you know, I think they've, they've announced plans to expand those reactors, and that's going to be something, again, Doug Ford talks about how he likes to work with everybody. If those announcements are going to come, they could benefit both the federal liberals and the provincial conservatives uh if you know if they're those joint announcement announcements that they talk about billions of dollars that we've seen so much for evs and i don't want to get you started on evs randy uh but i i, I do want to talk about uh monique taylor she has decided that uh she's going to make that jump to uh, mp or try to be an mp um this is not a good sign if you're Marit styles uh, a, a pretty popular uh, MPP in a, in a pretty orange area here in Hamilton. Uh, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of the move? And, and should uh, Styles be worried that more people might be jumping ship? Well, she's already had since um, Monique made that announcement. She's already had another MPP in Toronto say that they were going to do the same thing as Monique and, and try to mm -hmm. run, and run federally to see if, if they can win a seat. And you know, aside from being in a bigger pond. There's a really good reason for why these MPPs want to move to be a piece, and that's because as an MPP, you don't have a bench. And if you're an MP, you get almost half, well, more about half again as much more pay than an MPP does. So, you know, it's a problem in the MPPs haven't had a raise in 16 years, and they they 
took their pensions away 16 years ago. So it's, you know, it, it, it's much more of a personal benefit and, 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 and give you a future where you can retire comfortably um, if you're an MP. So, I mean, Doug Ford refuses to um, do anything about MPP pay scales. And he essentially has told his caucus, if you don't, if you don't like it, leave. Hmm. So, you know, it, it's, uh, uh, you know, it sounds like, you know, MP, MPPs make like 120, which sounds like a lot of money to a lot of people. But in the grand scheme of things now, that's not a lot. Hmm. You know, but a lot of people in the private sector make way more. Yeah, and I do. the same sort of, of, of responsibilities that an MPP has. Well, I was reading an article from CBC today, too, as well. It was about small-town mayors who were talking about the Sunshine List. Uh, they're, ex they're included in the Sunshine List. That's another list where, you know, if you, if you go back to what it was at in 1996, $100,000 is actually $180,000. And it was pretty telling. You had these mayors who were saying, like, you know, $100,000 isn't as much as it used to be. Caitlin Clark from the Premier's office responded to the article, said $100,000 is still a lot of money so that basically puts into perspective how doug ford thinks about uh you know compensation when it comes to uh to politicians uh but but to that point doug ford's gonna have to deal with this problem too we've already seen it right uh, especially if conservatives feel that they can use their name recognition how you know if it's if i'm gonna ask that question about styles same question should be asked how, how worried is doug ford about people jumping ship uh to run federally for the conservatives well he should be that's why we had that melton by election right Mm -hmm. the, the, the MDP there left to, to, so he could run federally. Yeah. And, um, you know, um, Clark, the, not Clark, um, Todd Smith yeah. left because he got a job in the energy sector and he made a lot more money. And he, he basically said that, you know, he said that to his local newspaper. Well, the reason I left is because I, I want to look after myself. I'm getting older and I need a pension. Hmm. So and I, and I need to make money now. So a lot of these guys, even though Steve was making a lot of money because he, he or Todd, I mean, was making a lot of money because he was a cabinet minister and he had you know his pay upgraded. It still wasn't anywhere near what a guy could make in the private sector that has the same skill set. Um, and we know there are more cabinet ministers uh, in this government than there have been in any other uh, government before. And uh, as you were mentioning energy, I thought Lecce and, uh, and Oosterhof, and I'm sure there'll be some announcements uh, from those two gentlemen uh, in the coming months. But uh, what else do you expect? I mean, we mentioned that big tunnel. What was your initial reaction? You've, you've been to a bunch of Ford pressers. You've watched them live. You've seen probably seen more back and forth with Ford and reporters than, uh, than just about anybody or even premiers and anybody. Uh, what did you make of that announcement, the tunnel? I just sort of went, what? You know, like, it, it's the biggest infrastructure project that essentially there's ever been. You know, it's it's a massive thing. The, 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 the 401 is, you know, the widest highway in the world in some spots. And it would, it, it's like 30 or 40 miles long, you know, or 40 to 50 kilometers long. And it would be just an incredibly expensive, incredibly disruptive process to do it. I really don't think it'll ever happen. And, you know, I don't understand why they aren't just buying back the 407. Although Ford did on a radio show the other day say that the reason they aren't going after the 407 and, and, and expanding it that way, expanding traffic capacity that way, is that in you know 25 years all of the 400 series highways including the 407 are going to be absolutely at capacity and commute times travel times on them will be double what they are now so he figures we need more more roadways that he's just got to add more roads and can do it forever I, I, it doesn't seem like a, a logical thing but you know as i say they must have polling that shows people really like their roads what sort of vulnerabilities will does is Ford facing? Uh, I, I read somewhere today, you know, there's a, there's an there might be a, a possible lawsuit when it comes to the LRT and and Metrolinx and Eglinton and all that kind of stuff. What what other liabilities is is Doug Ford kind of bracing for, uh, hiding from? Uh, what would you be looking for in the next uh, few months here that could possibly trip him up? Well, if somebody gets charged with this RCMP investigation in the Green Belt, that's the big one. Hmm. And this Metrolinx thing, um, it's the company that they're suing Metrolinx, not the government. Okay. And 
Metrolinx, you know, uh, I think it's not unfair to say that they have a real problem in completing projects. Like they've been working on the Eglinton Crosstown for it's like eight years or a decade late, something like that. Yeah. The, uh, the other subway line, it should have been done a couple of years ago. Um, the uh, Hamilton LRT, you know, they put out a report that that's all on time a few months ago, but who knows if it's on time or, in, or on schedule. You know, they seem to be incapable of doing anything. And and, and they have really heavy numbers of people in, in, in their in their organization, the, the, their, their PR department is is totally over inflated. Mm -hmm. They've got like a couple of hundred people or a hundred people working in their PR department. So it's like, you know, uh, I don't understand why they keep giving um, the guy that's the CEO at Metrolinx uh, raises when he doesn't seem to complete any projects. Yeah, I think uh, you know that that number definitely came into my head because I think it grew like four hundred percent. I'll double check those facts, but he's making well over. Speaking of the sunshine list, you can look it up yourself. Uh, but the the years it's jumped to how much he's making now, I think it's almost three quarters of a million dollars, um, which is a lot of money for a lot of projects that have gone uh, over budget. And and you mentioned the Eglinton LRT will be fifteen years uh, this coming yeah. up. So yeah, so it's been a very wow. long time. Uh, uh, Randy, always appreciate your insights. Uh, I know, uh, you know, you can't wait for everybody to get back to Queens Park. Uh, so I appreciate you making a few. Well, you uh, know few what? Minutes I really can It's gonna be, it's gonna be fast and furious, and and, and you know, for some reason I find it amusing. <laughs> I, you know, the other night it was a Saturday night, and I watched Bonnie Crombie's speech at the Liberal Convention in London. So, you know. There's something not quite right there. <laughs> All right. Well, you, you you know you've been doing it so long, uh, you you gotta love it now, eh? Uh, but really, Brandy, really appreciate you making the time today. Thank you, my friend. You take care, Louie. Good talking to you. Yeah, absolutely. My thanks to uh, Randy Rath for uh, joining me today, our uh, CHCH Queens Park producer. Always appreciate his insights. And uh, you can catch all his hard work on the uh, evening news, uh, in which he puts together great stuff from Queens Park for us here on CHCH. All right. Uh, I want to thank you for listening because we could not do the show without your support. So, hey, while you uh, listened and uh, maybe you liked it, uh, subscribe so you never miss an episode of this show or any of the other great shows we have for you, including Sportsline with Bubba O'Neill uh, and as well as uh, the, the CHCH Morning Live podcast, which is a recap of the first half hour of news. Um, so if you're on the go, you get Morning Live on the go. It's great. Uh, CHCH.com slash podcast, or if you're watching, you can scan the QR code that is on your screen. Uh, I want to thank Mike Corston for directing today's episode. And one more time, thank you for listening. Could not do the show without your support. From all of us here at CHCH, I'm Louis Bucko. Have a great day.